long time no see. Welcome back to Screen Scream. I'm Viola. The show was stopped due to my work at the U23 Baseball World Cup and the Football World Cup. Now they both come to an end. So here I am in the very first episode coming back. I'm going to introduce some movies that are related to K-pop. I'm not a fan of K-pop myself, but I've seen one of them, and I think it's really good. So I hope you enjoy the show today. Let's start with the first new movie, which is related to K-pop, but it's not a Korean movie. Azuma, a widow obsessed with Korean soap operas, travels abroad for the first time in her life to Seoul and finds more than she had bargained for. 在约西见他的公司，他们要我早点过去。那现在怎么样？我们下次再去赴约喽。The first new movie we're going to talk about today is a Singaporean movie, but as we heard in the introduction, it has a strong connection to Korea because the protagonist is obsessed with Korean soap operas, and the story is about her trip to Korea. This movie, Azuma, is going to represent Singapore to run for the best international film for the Oscars next year. It also got nominated as the best actress in a leading role, best new director, best actor in a supporting role, and best original screenplay at Taiwan's Golden Horse Awards. Azuma is the very first feature film of the Singaporean director He Shuming. It's produced by another Singaporean director. It's also the very first movie that the talented actress Hong Huifang portrayed the protagonist because she was always a supporting actress before. But in this movie, you can see how she portrayed this brave Azuma. Who lets go of herself? Basically, the story tells the typical kind of Asian woman who sacrifices everything for her family, and this is the very first time that she decides to live for herself. Oh, besides running for the Oscars and got nominated for Taiwan's Golden Horse Awards. Azuma also won Civic Awards at the Southeast Script Workshop, Best Film at an Indonesian Film Festival, Bali Makaria, and it also got selected into Busan Film Festival and selected into Hong Kong Asian Film Festival. What I like about this movie personally is how it combines culture shock. And family relationship perfectly. It's a touching movie, but at the same time, you get to laugh a lot during the movie. So I think it really is a good movie for family members to watch together. Now it's time to move on to a real Korean movie. Ditto. On a night when the total lunar eclipse occurs, a stranger's voice from the future echoes through the antique radio inside Yon's room. Do you hear? The mysterious radio connects the two college students living 20 years apart. They chat every night, sharing and supporting each other's love stories. Wow, the second new movie we're going to talk about today, which is a Korean movie, is about time travel. But instead of traveling in real time, it's their voice that travels through an antique radio on a night with lunar eclipse. Wow, so mysterious, so magical. Actually, Ditto is a remake of the classic romance in 2000. Starred by Yo Jinggu and Cho Yi Hyung. Oh, talking about Yo Jinggu, if you are a fan of him, you really need to watch these two new movies I recommend this week because he also starred in Azuma. It's very interesting. I'm not going to give out spoilers, but if you like him, you should go watch Azuma and Ditto. 
So basically, it's a story between 1999 and 2022. These two people who are from different times connect with each other. The person who's in 2022 needs to do an interview assignment. And that's the reason why she turns on the old radio and starts all these adventures. Something interesting is that Yo Jinggu has been an entertainer for 17 years. He became an actor when he was little, but it's his very first time to challenge himself in a romance in Ditto. He played a student in 1992. He's 25 years old now, and he actually revealed before that he always wants to play some characters that are related to teenage years when he's 20-something. And many Korean media also think that Yo Jinggu's romance is something that's really interesting, really worth watching in Ditto. Yo Jinggu himself once said, so far all the characters he has played are much older than himself, like his actual age. So basically he keeps playing more mature characters, characters that need to conquer pain and growth. But the character this time is somebody who's very honest to relationship, very sincere to love. So he felt very fortunate playing this role. If you like Yo Jinggu, I really think you should go experience his happiness while playing this role in Ditto. And now it's time for the most exciting Top 007. Even though we stopped the show for 10 weeks, I still keep people updated on the chart. But if you haven't followed it in written form, it's okay. I'm going to tell you what the top three were last week. Top three, Violent Night. Top two was The Menu. And top one, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. I can't believe that after 10 weeks, I can still have the chance to talk about Marvel. But not this week, because I have something more important to discuss. And let's check out top seven to top four first. Top six. Top 5. The Tunnel to Summer, The Exit of Goodbye. Top 4. That time I got reincarnated as a slime, the movie. Tempest no Nishi ni aru, Chisa na Kuni. Violent Night. Welcome to your worst Christmas ever. Let's go! Okay, good. Everything's so fresh after 10 weeks. So today, allow me to give a little bit introduction to each of the movie on the chart. Top 6, Jezebel. Actually, I really wanted to watch this movie, but when it was released, it was during the World Cup. So basically, I slept at 5 a.m. and got up at 1 p.m. I am also a person who likes to watch movies in the morning and I really couldn't get up at 8.30 to watch Decibel. So, so far, it's still something that I haven't got to watch. It's a Korean movie, by the way. Top 5, The Tunnel to Summer, The Exit of Goodbyes is a Japanese anime. What's so special about this is that the concept of it is similar to spirited away. So if you are interested in Japanese anime or you love spirited away, maybe you can go watch the tunnel to summer, the exit of goodbyes. There are two top fours this week. The first one is that time I got reincarnated as a slime, the movie. I went to the screening of this movie. I like it. This is the few animes that I actually watch. And this is the first time that they release a movie version. So if you are a fan of slime, you really should go watch this movie because it's not an adaptation of the TV series or the original novel. It's a brand new script, brand new story. Last but not least, Violent Night. It's directed by the same director of Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunters. It's just that instead of breaking everybody's imagination towards a fairy tale, this time the director wants to ruin Christmas. 
well, not actually ruin, but you know, it, Violent Night is the play on words of Silent Night, and it's very gruesome. Trust me, it's gruesome. So if you love Christmas, you probably won't like this movie, but it's not bad. I can tell you, it's not bad. And now, time for the top three. Top three. Avatar, the way of water. If you want to live here, you have to ride. Let's do it. Top two, the menu. You shouldn't be here tonight. You, my dear guests, are not. Top one, Black Panther, Wakanda forever. They called him Kukul Khan, the Feather Serpent God. Even though Black Panther is still top one, I'm not going to talk about it today. I believe it will stay on the chart, so we will have more chances to talk about it. But today, I'm going to talk about Avatar, The Way of Water. This is the sequel. You may think this is the redundant information, but trust me, some people don't know it's a sequel. The biggest difference in this sequel is that in the first episode, we saw the world of Jake and Natili is the world of them too, but this time they're going to be parents. So you know, after 10 years or a little bit more than 10 years, the story still surrounds the two main protagonists, but now they form the family, they are parents. The producer Lando emphasized that the sequel is not only for exposing areas on Pandora or new locations that the audience hasn't seen before, but to dig deeper into the Navi's culture. They also introduce other advanced new tribes on Pandora with different cultural characteristics. One big difference I'm pretty sure everyone notices is that the main scene was moved from the forest to the ocean. Besides the blue skin of the Navis, we saw in the first episode that everything's so green, but this time it's so blue. So now it's basically only blue. That's the only hue in Avatar. But besides the color, the attitude and modes of the adventures are totally different this time. In the first episode, we saw that the male protagonist would jump from anything he's riding. This is very crazy and it's almost suicidal. It's basically a jump based on belief. But this adventurous behavior helped us to construct this universal view of Avatar. Female protagonist also, she would jump from a big tree trunk assuming that there would be leaves underneath to catch her, I guess. But you know, part of the downside of moving from the forest to the ocean is that we won't see these things anymore. Especially after they become parents. They don't take adventures like that anymore. Even director James Cameron, he said himself, after becoming a father, he totally changed his attitude and how he thinks about adventure. So one of my friends said after she watched Avatar, The Way of Water, she thinks that if you don't have children, there's no problem in your life. But that's all the time we have for today. Hope you like the show. And remember to tune in same time next week at Screen Screen. I'm Viola. See you next week.